Now, this is part two of the Alpha Strike story where they team up with Fantastic Force. But you can see from the cover, the team up hasn't exactly gone as planned. A mind control baddie called Edlock, he has defeated the first wave of heroes who were investigating a small town in Canada that he had taken mental control of. And now he mentally controls those heroes and is forcing them into fighting the ones who didn't gun on the mission. And here on this first page, we get a nice picture up top showing us who those heroes that are not under his control are. From left to right, we have Human Fire and The Thing from Fantastic Force. And then over to Alpha Strike, we have Miss Maple, Windshield. You might think that is Aurora Borealis, but... It's Northman, and he needs a goddamn haircut. And then at the end, that is Witchy Fires. I think it was Dill Sauce Martian who wanted me to talk about or review Summit with Witchy Fires in it. So here you can. She's in this story. Not much, but she's in it. Really nice page this, I like the artwork generally, but there are sometimes panels where it tanks. Some of Fabio Nicieza's ideas on this series suck, but his scripting is usually always decent. He has a nice handle on some of the characters, and the others, he at least gives them fun dialogues we are pretty much straight in with the fighting stuff the heroes fighting the other heroes some of the matchups they aren't that good but there are some like bigfoot fighting the thing that one we get a say and Gladiator is against his wife, Miss Maple. Another obvious matchup. If you do read this story on my say so, be warned again. Fabio Nicieza swapped their code names around. And it is fucking confusing. Uh, Mr. Fantasticals, he fights Northman, which is like, they were the two leftover characters that they couldn't think of who to have fight. One of my favourite fights is on the next page. We have Windshield versus Invisible Wife. And I love Windshield. Most people didn't really think of Windshield much, if at all. But there's something about him I love. I think he is cool. I prefer his second costume of the one he has here. Uh, he was introduced a few issues before this one. But him and Invisible Wife, this is a clever pairing because they both have control over similar sort of elements. We also have Human Fire and Aurora Borealis. And down here, a reference to Human Fire being married, which will soon not be canon let's have a moment silence for human fire's marriage not really i'm not waiting saying now for so long when there's more plot to explain human fire's flame is bright enough 
that it snaps Aurora Borealis out of mind control. And we have Witchy Fires versus Talisman. And it becomes very clear why Witchy Fires is in this story. They didn't know who else to have gone up against Talisman. I think Witchy Fires has an interesting character. At this point, she is still a mystery. And she doesn't have much ganon for her. But in Simon Furball's run, he starts establishing a backstory and showing she has like a dark side and evil heritage. Her costume in this sucks too. I didn't think it's until that excellent men miniseries about Magic Girl that she gets a decent look. In the Simon Furball run, I think she is just wearing all red. And after this, we have some more of Thing versus Bigfoot. This is like the big spectacle fight people want to see. The two big monster men smashing each other around. Uh, this was when Thing... He didn't actually have his powers. He was de-transformed. And he went around in an exoskeleton. You saw him at the start of the first part out of costume. And that was the only end towards things set up. When he guest stars in comics, it sometimes comes as a shock. That he is in an exoskeleton because there hasn't really been any reference to that before. And they have just treated it like everything's normal. But yeah, this was his status quo for the Simon Waltonson run on Fantastic Force. And speaking of... Miss McDonald's, who was like Thing's substitute on the team, she is oddly missing from this story. Mr. Fantasticals and Northman, and this is fucking freaky shit. Northman, without a care in the world, he tries to stretch Mr. Fantasticals's body. As far as it will go. And Northman probably would make for a diabolical bad guy. But through all these individual fights. As we saw with Aurora Borealis. The heroes are being snapped out of mind control. By various factors. Memories, physical exertion, unconsciousness. We get a lot of stuff about Gladiator. And that isn't good because he is the worst thing about Fabio Nicieza's run. And after all the heroes are freed from his control, Edlock, he kind of admits defeat and just wants to leave. I was sure there was a lot more Aurora Borealis stuff with Ed Lock. Uh, Ed Lock, he has been written like a triad vertigo baddie. And it is just shy of actually being agony to read his narration or his dialogue. Maybe redeeming all that is this bit at the end where the heroes confront him and he stops with the gibberish rhymes and there is a character underneath it and he explains that he thinks that you need to be strong to survive in the world and that might makes right and he has been doing all this because he is physically weak and, like, he actually cannot fight them. And, therefore, he actually cannot achieve anything according to his own beliefs. 
But after all this, we get to a short teaser, a prologue for the next issue, and a major subplot in this run, and the best stuff in the run. Diamond Little, she gans in the shower, and she has a lump on her breast. She has got breast cancer. And I think it is a brave story today in 1991. It's fairly original. And it's only a shame that it ends with a magic alien laser curing her of cancer. Because we do some good character stuff with her and her illness. When all is said and done, this is a pretty good issue. A nice crossover between the two teams. I do recommend it for a short little read. Seven thumbs up. Always check your breasts for lumps.